Good morning, students. Welcome for this the session. Today I have taken a portion from an UV spectroscopy, a part actually. In this I have taken not the instrumentation specifically, I have taken the for discussion fishes or Fisher and Woodward's formula. Fisher and Woodward's formula I have taken for our discussion. In this actually I have made into two parts because before going into the calculation part how to calculate how this formula is utilized and applied for calculating the UV absorption of an organic compound by using a basal values which has been derived by Fisher. I thought it to make it two part because it needs for the degree level students a pharmacy should know about uh, the basic of electronic transitions happening in an organic molecule. That is a theoretical knowledge which is needed for going our application to do the calculation part by knowing a structure of an organic compound. If I explained this and then I go to the calculation it will be lengthy so that I made into two parts. So I hope we will start with the first definition of this Fisher and Woodward's formula. In 1959, Louis Frederick Fisher modified these rules with more experimental data and the modified rule is known as Woodward Fisher rule. So, if you want to make it simply according to the Woodward Fisher rule, the lambda max actually in a degree level the student should know lambda max in the lab also you might have found out a lambda max of a component or a substance by doing its various dilution known concentration you might have studied in the absorption in various nanometers selected by a filter or by means of spectrophotometer in UV range or in visible range you might have done in calorimetry and then you might have done in UV spectrometry also to find out the maximum absorption of the light radiation what is the nanometer can be identified by graphical method which you might have done in lab. So, this is what we are theoretically it is possible for you to find out the lambda max by means of using this formula and then it will be easy for this researcher or the student to go for practical session to perform 
with the instrument than to identify the exact lambda max. So, according to Woodward's Fisher rule, the lambda max of the molecule can be calculated by using the formula lambda max is equal to base value. The base value and all we will be discussing in the next part especially. But there is a base value which is determined by the scientist Fisher who is Frederick Fisher and then adding according to the substituents and contribute substituents which is present in the structures and also other epsilon values and then you can identify the lambda max that is what his calculation he has given some addition of nanometers and subtraction of the nanometers according to the substituents which is present in the chemical structure which is already known to us for an organic molecule. So, this is what the fishes are wood and woodward's fishes own. So, it is a very important session in a theoretical knowledge for a student should know. It is possible to calculate a lambda max theoretically by means of knowing a structure and then we can go for practical even. That is why I took this specific topic for you to explain. And lambda max means we know that molar absorption coefficient which you might have studied very clearly in your basic spectrophotometry when you started itself you might have studied the Beer Lambert's law. Beer's law and Lambert's law how they are related with the thickness of the medium and the concentration of the solution and you might have studied very clearly. So, whenever you are going for studying a spectrophotometry study the main thing is dealing with dilution factor concentration of the solution which you are taking for your experimental procedure that you should always remember. And now we will go for before going to the application of the formula it is needed for you to know about the various transitions energy levels of an organic molecule how it differs and then if you go to the calculation I hope it will be very much easy for a student to know about this Woodward's Fisher Woodward's rule how it can be applied for identifying or to determining a lambda max of an organic molecule in nanometer. So, you see the difference in energy levels first we are going to discuss delta E that means difference in energy levels between excited and unexcited state we have already discussed in other chapters you might have discussed you might be knowing about the ground state and excited state of an organic molecule. So, there is a change in the energy level that is what delta E between the excited and unexcited state during excitation absorption of the light when a light falls on an organic molecule you can get that it is absorption and some molecules have a tendency to give fluorescence phosphorescence. So, absorption fluorescence phosphorescence what is the energy level difference that is what which we should know that that is first absorption and then the energy level is higher difference energy level is higher in fluorescent and still more it is higher in phosphorescence that is what we are mentioned here and as the wavelength corresponds to the difference in energy value are inversely proportional to the energy how in order when you talk about the lambda max that is when you talk about the wavelength when you see for absorption the wavelength lambda max will be lower than the fluorescence and fluorescence will be lower than the phosphorescence. 
that you know that already when we have discussed about the fluorimetry we told that the, the molecule having the fluorescence or fluorochrome which is having an structural act, activity of absorption of an UV light and it may emit a visible light that means lower nanometer UV lights UV radiation you should know the radiation of nanometer UV you can say that 0 to 400 simply approximately 400 to 800 we will talk about nanometer we will talk about it is visible radiation visible radiation so by that only you can know that when the absorption in UV light and even you can emit slightly increased in UV radiation itself it is possible but fluorescents are visible radiation so that UV radiation is absorbed in a lower wavelength but stronger energy and it can emit fluorescence and phosphorescence with a delay that is a small delay which is happening in the vibrational energy which we have discussed in the theoretical what happens when an organic molecule getting excited by means of its absorption and coming to the ground state it emits the fluorescence and phosphorescence we have discussed so that is what when you come out the lambda max the nanometer is lower absorption is lower than fluorescence fluorescence lower than phosphorescence for example the wavelength of maximum excitation fluorescence phosphorescence for because all the things can happen in andrasine that is why we have taken a example for andrasine if you see 255 nanometer it's in uv range the absorption if you, if you keep a solution of andrasine it can absorb light and the lambda max absorption you have to make a filter of light a monochromatic light should be converted or it should be made into monochromatic nanometer with 255 to fall on the solution which you kept in the in instrument that is 255 nanometer and when you see what is its fluorescent capacity the fluorescent when you keep that fluorescent it, it, it has an emitting capacity in 425 nanometer it is coming to the visible radiation range and then you can see that next phosphorescence still more higher 680 nanometer so this is one example which we can just mention about how the lambda max how the energy levels of the light radiation by absorption and emission differences so electronic configuration what happens it is very important to know about because we know about bonding we know about electronic configuration of various atoms various substituents which are present so certain terms certain theoretical terms you have to know in this uv spectroscopy which will be more helpful for you to write your exam and as well as in your future you may go for higher studies and research it will be helpful for this basic knowledge which i am giving to only the degree students i am not going for very high which our i know i am just giving an explanation electrons in a molecule can be classified into three different types one is electro in single covalent bond sigma bond you might a strong bond stigma bond these are tightly bound and radiation is high energy and radiation of high energy is required to excite them so they are very strong bond you need high energy means immediately we are saying shorter wavelength can you follow me that you have to remember shorter wavelength high energy that is you can remember that approximately just now we have discussed about the UV radiation or stronger wavelength when compared to visible. So they are having number and the nanometer number is less shorter wavelength. So that type of wavelength rays when it falls on an, on an object or on an organic molecule which contains 
single covalent bond or a sigma bond, it will get excited. Understand? That's what we want. The shorter wavelength is required to excite this strong bond, sigma bond. And electrons attached to atoms such as chlorine, if suppose if you are in a compound, methyl, it is chloro, that is for example, chloroform, or if you take a chlorine, that is chlorobenzene, or a chlorobenzene, chlorine is present in a benzene as a substituent, or a methyl chloride, a methyl, it is an, I, I, it is an alkane compound which is, having. so one chlorine molecule or an oxygen, if a ketone, aldehyde there are nitrogen if it is an amine primary amine or secondary amine or tertiary amine nitrogen is present what is the main part there will be a lone pair of electrons nitrogen or oxygen if it is present there will be a lone pair of electrons even OH is there hydrogen is removed the O the alone it is there in this you might have studied about there will be lone pair of electrons so they have some influence in transition. So these non-bonding, they don't have bond, but the electrons are there. Electrons can be getting excited in lower energy when compared to the strong bond. Here it's lower energy, longer wavelength. Higher energy means shorter wavelength. You have to remember, very simple to remember. Understand? Longer wavelength than tight bound bonding electrons as we have seen just before the slide this just before the, the just above the line which was shown that is stronger bond needs to get excited shorter wavelength because you need a strong energy of wavelength that is shorter wavelength understand so uh, next third one is electrons in double bond double bond or pi bonds they are weaker bonds they are very easy to get excited. So, you need less energy. And triple bond also, double bond, triple bonds, they have pi orbital. Pi bonds, when you can use that word pi bonds also, which can be excited relatively very easily because they are weak bond. And in molecules containing a series of, some of the molecules which have series, Alternative double bonds, that is a very good conjugate double bond system, which is very good necessary for UV, for example, absorption of light. Alternative double bond, conjugate double bond system. The pi electrons are delocalized. You might have studied in your chemistry, it means delocalized electrons. You might have drawn a diagram, delocalized and require less energy for excitation so that the absorption rises to higher wavelength. Also the lambda max will be changed accordingly. So sometimes you know that the compound, a, a organic compound may have a single bond, may have double bond system, they may have lone pair of electrons which have been oxygen, chlorine, not only chlorine, you can see halogens, nitrogens. So they all have lone pair of electrons. So this all are present in a compound. There will be a difference in their absorption of the light. So you should know this can be calculated by Woodward's Fisher's rule. It says that we have to calculate all the substituents and the structure of the compound to determine its lambda max theoretically can be calculated. That is what we are going to do. That is what we are going to discuss today. Why I am taking this, the student should know. What is this light absorption? What is this lambda max? How you are calculating? What is the necessity for a light to get absorbed by an organic compound? If you know the basic, you will do lot of things. You can go for lot. There are many books. There are many internet sources, higher versions are there. This I am giving very, very simple basic knowledge only, which I know, which I have read. Understand? Can you follow? Just listen to that. It will be very easy subject. And now types of transition. When an organic molecule, the light falls, what all types of transition will occur? As we have discussed, there are three bonds. There is pi bond. There is three types. There is pi bond, 
sigma bond and lone pair of electron uh, molecules may be there, it may change the lambda max. And transition in an organic molecule by means of this there is lot of transition that means electron transition which takes place. What is this transition? Energy absorbed in the UV or ultraviolet region by complex organic molecule causes transition of valence electron transition transition of valence electron in the molecule. The transitions are sigma to sigma the strong bond sigma to sigma n to sigma star we put the star means we are electron transition understand. So, n sigma star means a compound like chloromethane chlorobenzene they are having a lone pair of electron in the halogen chlorine or fluorine which is attached as a substituent they can give a transition energy to the double bond or to the single bond of sigma star that is what n to sigma star n to pi star means double bond system which contain an electronic that is n to pi star weak bond and pi to pi star transition only four to remember very simple what all types of transition can occur in a organic molecule sigma to sigma star n to sigma star n to pi star pi to pi star like that you can remember understand can you follow that is very important and the energy level of these transitions are what is the energy levels because we are talking about for example sigma bond means you need more energy to get excited and you are giving short wavelength thing and when you are giving pi bonds that means double bonds you need lesser energy for them to get excited so you are giving longer wavelength of light this is what we discussed do not forget this and keep it in mind what I am saying that will be very much interesting for you to know the subject and to get and, uh, and to understand the basic details. So, n to pi star is less energy required than pi to pi star n to sigma star needs less energy than as uh, sigma to sigma star. So, the lowest energy needed is n to pi star pi to pi star is the next and the next one is n to sigma star and the sigma to sigma star type of transitions. So, n to pi star transition this is seen in unsaturated compounds, unsaturated molecules, unsaturated molecules means double bond compounds, ethylene, ethylene you know very simple double bond compound. There are many other compounds are there if there is more conjugated double bonds of butene, propene, pentene. There are many type of double bonds even, even double bond and allyl compounds you might have studied various compounds. So, double bond containing compound if they have a substituent of O, sulfur or halogen what will happen there will be lone pair of electron. So, which contain atoms like oxygen nitrogen, sulfur transition exhibit a weak band in their absorption spectrum. So, you see it is very important for us to know about a ethylene if it is having a substitution of chlorine the absorption will be slightly different from an ethy plain ethylene. So, the substitu substituent have a gain over or or, or, or you can say it has an influence in their light absorption of a compound. So, you can see that N2 pi star in this transition an electron of unshared pair of electron on a heteroatom that means oxygen, nitrogen or a halogen, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine anything can be there. So, it gets excited by the pi electrons, where is the pi electron double bond, 
You see the structure? Even if there is a ketone, there is a double bond system is there. It is just a carbonyl group also have the same system which can give this transition of N to pi star transition. This requires least energy, hence occurs longer wavelength. Least energy, longer wavelength. Understand that is what? You can see the double bond O. You see there is two type of, we are shown there, two peaks. One is 250 50 nanometer, another is 280 to 300 nanometer for a compound. Why? It shows in two types of places light absorption. It pushes to the longer wavelength due to presence of a lone pair of electron in a structure. It pushes, normally ethylene is absorbing in 250 nanometer means if there is an oxygen in ethylene, it pushes that ethylene absorption towards higher wavelength. Less energy is required, less energy is sufficient because of presence of a lone pair of electron. I hope you have got my point. Example aldehyde ketones can also be taken an example here. Understand? And now the next one is pi to pi star transition where double bond compounds will have an ethylene will have a double bond compound. There is no lone pair of electrons then it has a transition of pi to pi star. Pi to pi star transition corresponds to promotion of an electron from a bond pi, pi orbital to a bonding pi orbital pi orbital in electronic configuration example the spectrum of ethylene exhibits an intense band in 174 nanometer and a weak band in 200 nanometer due to pi to pi star transition so you can see there is a pi to pi star transition when they have seen the clouding of pi to pi star transition. They have observed two places of, in two places they have seen their excitation absorption of the light lambda max. So you can see there is LUMO and HOMO that is mentioned. What is LUMO and what is HOMO? You should know. HOMO means high occupied molecular orbital. LUMO means lowest unoccupied molecular orbital usually happens by lone pair of electrons. Do not be confused through because of LUMO in higher in energy than HOMO. Of the orbitals they have electrons the higher occupied molecular orbital is highest in energy and the orbitals that do not the lower unoccupied molecular orbital is the lowest in energy. That is just I want to show you want to know the terms which may come across when you are having a detail. But a simple which you know that double bond system is there means it will have pi to pi star type of transition. And the next one is N to sigma star transition. This is also in the first, first slide itself we discussed. N to sigma star means sigma star is strong bond, single bond which contain N electrons means there should be a halogen, nitrogen or oxygen, any heteroatoms which can contribute the lone pair of electron to get transition towards the strong band of bond of sigma. So, saturated compounds like methane, ethane, propane and alkanes can be taken as and even you can say cyclohexanes, all these saturated compounds, no double bonds will be there and have lone pair unbonded electrons if there is undergo N2 if there is electrons, how the electrons may be there? Electrons due to presence of heteroatoms if they are having substituents. N2 sigma star transition in addition to sigma to sigma star transition. There will be two if there is a substituent is present. So, the energy required for the N2 sigma star transition is generally 
less than that required to the sigma to sigma star transition and the corresponding absorption appears at longer wavelength in near UV region that is 180 to 200 nanometer. Example, you can take an example of CH33 and that means tertiary amine, tertiary amine or butamine, sorry not propamine which is tertiary amine. Lambda max is 237 nanometer. The presence of nitrogen lone pair of electron which can give rise to this lambda max. And you see the, the last one, the strongest bond, the sigma to sigma star transition. This transition occurs in the compounds which are electrons. No lone pair of electrons will be present. Only simple saturated compound. It needs more energy and lower wavelength of radiation is needed for them to get excited. That is what we are insisting you to have an understanding. So, saturated compounds, sigma to sigma star occurs in 126 lower nanometer of lambda max methane, 121.9 nanometer ethane, 135 nanometer. But you see, the same thing if there is nitrogen, if there is an oxygen, if there is a chlorine in that compound like methane, ethane, immediately it has changed to higher wavelength of 237, 240 or 230 nanometer with lower energy of light is sufficient to get them get excited. So, this is also a picture to show you about how the N2 sigma Egmo pi star for carbonyl compound that means C double bond O carbonyl compounds ketone aldehydes acids these all comes under N2 pi star transition. Aromatics like benzene, naphthalene they all have double bond systems inside the ring structure conjugated double bond system. So, pi to pi star of aromatics, dienes, dienes, there are many dienes, allyl compounds like di, dimethyl, allyl, pyrophosphate or pentyl, pyro, pentyl compounds dienes pi to pi star unsaturated alke, alkanes unsaturated alkanes like ethane, ethene, propene unsaturated they are also pi to pi star of transition occurs. If there is presence of heterocompounds like nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur or halogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine which can give a lone pair of electron then N2 sigma star of transition. If there is nothing is there only single bond then sigma to sigma star transition. You see the graph it is shown that the x axis is showing the wavelength and this is about the just to know about the compounds in the y axis which only to show you carbonyls they are in higher wavelength area, you see that. And coming back, they slowly aromatics and slowly dienes, slowly unsaturated alkenes, slowly ONS and lower. That means stronger wavelength is stronger energy is needed. The wavelength only comes slowly, slowly down. That's what you have to remember. Lower the wavelength stronger the energy like that you can remember types of electronic configuration transitions just I have made that is sigma star anti bonding pi star anti bonding n star n so of presence of hetero atoms non bonding and pi is double bond and sigma is single bond it is the lowest energy level so the type of transition and its energy levels can be easily shown by means of 
a diagrammatic expressions and explanation can be given in your examination also. That's what my aim, just you should know about what is mean with transition, what is its energy level, what is its importance to find out the absorption of the light and how we can use this all knowledge to have a base value and to identify a structure and after the knocking this, knowing the structure, we can theoretically find out the lambda max of an organic molecule using Woodward's Fisher's rule or Fisher's Woodward's rule. That's what we have taken this. And another, another one graphical to just to show you about some of the compounds, they may give two peaks like which is having you can see pi to pi star of transition it shows some 240 nanometer that is what the peak which they have shown another peak also shown by n to pi star of transition due to presence of an oxygen in the compound so this is one example a theoretical knowledge a student should know that by means of presence of lone pair of electrons there will be light absorption difference will be there because it needs less energy to get excited so, N2 here you can see that what type of transitions can occur pi to pi star and also N2 pi star of transition can occur here and they can have different peaks and in which we can take the highest one for our calculation to do the experiments. And there are four types of bands, absorption bands. What do you mean by band? Band means just now what I shown in the picture, peaks I told that is called band, the peak, the band which you are getting in the graphical expression. So, that is what are the types of bands? There is R band, K band, E band and B band. R band rises from N2 pi star transition that means lone pair of electron towards double bonds and K band they rises from pi to pi star transition in conjugated system double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, conjugated double bond system. Butadiene is an example, 135, hexadiene, even acetoquinones can be taken for this consideration, styrene can be taken, these pi and pi star forms. And E band, ethylene band, that means CH2, double bond CH2, even benzene shows these bands in absorption of 210 nanometer. And that is B band, benzenoid band, this occurs, the compounds like benzene, naphthalene, pyridine, acridine, all this which are organic compounds which can come across. In styrene you can see benzene B and the B bands and the K and the B bands also occur in styrene which contain conjugate double bond systems. And in benzene, benzaldehyde you can see K to B and the B to B and occurs. The benzenoid bands and K bands also arises from pi to pi star of transition. Understand? So, when you see UV absorption spectrum, lambda max is 217 means you can see butadiene, you can get a very butadiene, it does not have any type of N, only pi to pi star of transition, very strong absorption, you can see that is butadienes will get 217 nanometer, unless otherwise if it is you are substituting this, if you are taking another compound which is substituted in butadiene with oxygen or nitrogen or sulfur, automatically you will get the uh, chance of n 2 by star of transition. So, there is another graph which I want to show you. So, you can see there is two peaks are there. Why? Because of substitute and if there is a transition, two transitions are there like n 2 pi star, pi 2 pi star or sigma 2 sigma star or n 2 sigma star of transition can occur in certain compounds which complicated organic molecules. They can give various peaks, so it is necessary for you to go for calculating all the substituents which are present in the organic molecule. So, that is what we have shown here, a different amount of light is absorbed in each wavelength, each chemical procedure, a different characteristic spectrum, each compound according to its substituents. The shape of the particular spectrum which is obtained here, the shape of the particular graph, particular band, particular spectrum can be used to identify a chemical in qualitative analysis also. 
and is because now advanced computer system even they can identify qualitatively the presence of the compound that's why we are making this data even in other instruments like chromatographic techniques like HPLC, HPTLC. Advanced technology can be applied for them to identify by means of the spectrum, by means of the spectrum, by means of detector. We are using the UV spectro detectors are in various instruments to identify by qualitative identification, quantitative identification by means of the spectrum can be used to identify the chemical qualitative analysis. The spectrum has two peaks in this, in this picture which shown different heights and different width and different location in the nanometers. So by that itself they can identify what is a compound which is present in the mixture and easily it can be qualitatively identified and quantitatively also identified. And this is another graph which is stored the band. This is called band and spectrum of the UV spectrum. Wavelength you can see how the 200 to 350 nanometer we have shown for benzene you can see the peak which is clearly shown that 288 nanometer you can see that sharp and height and you can see but the naphthalene it is pushed to little more higher wavelength because it has little more double bond system conjugated double bond system the more the conjugate double bond system the more transition occurs the more electron transition pi to pi star tie n to pi star transition occurs the presence of substituents without substituent itself when there is extended double bond automatically it is shifted to the higher wavelength that means lower energy is needed for it is sufficient for them to get excited that's what the students should remember this graph i want just to show these graphs to just to make them to understand that what is necessary for any organic molecule to get excited or how it will absorb? What do you mean by the double bond system? What do you mean by chromophore? What do you mean by now we are going to discuss about what do you mean by chromophore? What do you mean by oxochrome? What do you mean by bathochromic shift? What do you mean by hexochromic shift? This is a very important that short notes which they will ask. It's very simple. No one will forget once you listen or once you read the basic thing. Very, very simple of uh, things to remember understand and now this is some of the data which i have given to just to know about see for example ch3 4 ch4 that means not ch3 not ch4 that means methyl it has only single bond a strong bond that is sigma to sigma star lowest lambda max it needs high energy because it is strong bond it needs high energy to get them to excited see this is a proof for understanding for you this much Slides which made you to understand just to have an idea. Lower than wavelength, higher the energy. Understand? So, CH3Cl that is chloro, chlorine is attached, that is a halogen is attached with a lone pair of electron to methane. By removing one hydrogen, you are getting n 2 sigma star of transition which gives little more higher wavelength 173 for them to excite it. See, lower energy is needed. And if suppose the carbonyl compound C double bond O is there. Ketone. Dimethyl ketone. Pi to pi star of transition. See the wavelength? 185. In benzene, you can have N2 sigma, N2 pi star pi to pi star, pi to pi star of transition in different ways because they are, you might have studied in the Kekulé structure of benzene, when you studied benzene in your organic chemistry, the basic chemistry you might have studied, the double bonds which is present in the ring structure, they are unstable. They can go for resonance structure. They will shift to one, that is why sometimes some books they used to put round. So, there is electronic clouding. If you read more and though the Kekulé when you was Sleeping, he dreamed that a snake is rotating in his head. That's what I read in M.K. Jain book. If you read, it is written very clearly. How the Kekulé says uh, the double bond system in a benzene is not stable. So that's why it has a transition of N to pi star, pi to pi star, pi to pi star of transition. N to pi star of transition is 275 nanometer, pi to pi star of transition 200 nanometer, pi to pi star of transition again it can give to 255 nanometer. So 
this is what the bens this is what lambda max means this is what the transition means presence of double bonds presence of molecules presence of substituents have influence to change the absorption of the light in an organic compound this understanding if the students have finished you can go for the calculation part of theoretical knowledge you can go for applying your knowledge in wood fishers wood walls rules understand now we are coming to the chromophore now this is also we have discussed the same thing what do you mean by chromophore the terms you should know no the chromophore is a any structure should have a double bond conjugated double bond or an or an molecule which can absorb light what is chromophore that is chromophore a function functional group which has a character absorption spectrum in the vegetable or uv it is ultraviolet region is known as chromophore a compound which have a structure which has the ability to get, ab get absorb the radiation of uv are visible that is called chromophore what is that you need chromophore should contain chromophore contain what is that invariable double bonds or triple bonds and included c double bond c linkage or c triple bond c bond and nitrogen nitroso nitrogen or nitroso no groups which have lone pair of electron are azo compounds nitrogen compounds only azo compounds inside the ring outside the ring inside the ring we are talking about carbonyl compounds thio carbonyl compounds lone pair of electrons they all are chromophore so if a chromophore is conjugated with another of the same or a different kind they then the absorption is enhanced and a new absorption band new absorption graph new absorption peak new absorption band appears in the next higher wavelength that's what i was telling you just now the graph how a benzene and an aphthalene benzene shows in the lower wavelength and aphthalene shows little higher because it contain more conjugated double bond system increased double bond system increased transition increased presence of clouding of electron increase transition occurs increases the wavelength less energy is sufficient for them to get excited understand so what do you mean by oxochrome now what is oxochrome oxochromes are like oxygen chlorine nitrogen halogens which are present or nitroso compounds which are present they may give a transition but uh, they are not involving directly in the absorption understand that's what we want to say that's why it is called oxochrome the absorption of the given molecule may also be enhanced shifted by presence of group is called oxochrome they did not directly they do not absorb significantly the ultraviolet region may have a profound effect or an enhancing effect or a supporting effect on the absorption of the molecule which they attached to them that is what you have to remember an important oxochromes include oh nh2 even ch3 and no2 groups and their effect which is to displace the absorption maximum of a longer wavelength is referred to as bathochromic shift what do you mean by bathochromic shift suppose a molecule which is absorbing in 215 and it is shifted to 250 or 280 nanometer by means of presence of oh or by means of presence of nh2 or by means of presence of an ch3 of an oxochrome that is called bathochromic shift understand bathochromic shift so this is this is an electronic donation by means of you can see related to the electron donating property of the oxochromes so bathochromic shift means the shift of absorption to a longer wavelength due to substituent or by solvent effect also sometimes some solvent also i mean this is all that is also we are discussing sometimes some solvent effect some solvents have an influence to give some electron yeah, that is means ionization will takes place 
pH ionization which supports shifting of the nanometer from lower to higher less energy is sufficient understand that is called solvent effect that is called red shift so bath of in general bathochromic shift means what a shift of absorption of a compound in a longer wavelength due to a substituent or by means of a solvent that is called red shift or bathochromic shift hypsochromic shift hypo that means hypso hypso hypo hypo or hypso you can say hypo hypsochromic shift the shift of absorption of the shorter wavelength due to substituent of a solvent effect it is also possible sometimes some solvent some substituent they will cool down sometimes you are having a double single bond pi bond structure but it is very rare to know to study but still we have to see in the negative also so that is called a blue shift or hypsochromic shift energy level for example hyperchromic effect means what increase in absorption intensity that is called hypochromic effect hypsochromic effect means decrease in absorption intensity is called hypsochromic effect these words sometimes they are used that's why we have taken as a definition now we have to see some examples also to get an understanding for this what we have explained so for example when you take a structure of that is for example vitamin a that is vitamin a1 and a2 are there that is what which is shown here a1 and a2 what is the difference you can see a1 is not having the double bond which i am showing here you see here there is no double bond in the a1 structure understand but in a2 there is a double bond so due to presence of this double bond you can see the conjugate double bond system which is present here in the vitamin a structure which i have drawn there you can see uh, when you see one more extended double bond system one double bond which is extended in the ring which is continuously you can see from the from the um, the structure which is drawn there vitamin a double bond single bond double bond single bond double bond single bond double bond single bond and double bond and a single bond but there is no the next single double bond in vitamin a inside the ring but in vitamin a1 type and a2 reduced form of the vitamin a is called a2 structure which contain extra one double bond so what is happening when there is an extra double bond immediately we should know what we have discussed that means immediately there will be an enhancing of transition will occur a pi to pi star transition may be extra will be there so that you need less energy so the wavelength might be shifted that is a bathochromic shift example you can say that you can write an example for bathochromic shift from your vitamin a1 vitamin a in a1 and a2 we can see that bathochromic shift can be occur due to the presence of one double bond system and also there is one ch3 is there that is the arrow which shows there is a ch3 there is a ch3 which is attached this ch3 which also having a steering effect steric effect which is acting as an oxochrome which also enhances the energy level that means it pushes the energy level which is the um, the absorption of the light from lower nanometer to higher nanometer that is why the addition double bond of vitamin a2 that is vitamin a2 has changed the absorption maximum to 361 nanometer 351 nanometer this compound also interest because of addition of an absorption cost by 6 ethylic bond 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 5 ethylic bond only is present in the uh, vitamin a1 but in a2 you can see one more extra 6 so this at uh, for example when it is in the a1 can absorb only in 287 nanometer but a2 it absorbs in 361 nanometer finished our our understanding very clear the effect which is enhanced the by means of even it can be enhanced by means of the steric effect of the methyl group which is present in the second position of that for example in the ring structure so this is the graph which is for a vitamin a to show you there is two peaks one peak you can see there is a 282 nanometer there is a peak which is that one and you can see here 351 nanometer can you see this the arrow which is specifically it is showing so the 250 51 nanometer in vitamin a2 
is due to the presence of additional double bond, additional ethnic double bond. In this, for example, this 284-82 nanometer is absorbed for vitamin A1. There is only 5 ethnic bond conjugate double bond system, but here it is 6 ethnic bond. And this also having a steric effect due to the presence of CH3, they have identified and it gives 2, 3, 51 nanometer as a lambda max. So, in sulfonamide, another example in sulfonamides, which we know sulfonamides is a very important compound which you might have studied, sulfonamides. That is an uh, important antibiotic which you might have studied in, uh, in PABA and sulfonamide and what is the basic reaction even mechanism of action, all these things you might have studied in pharmacology and medicinal chemistry and all. But anyhow, this we are coming to, you might knowing there is NH2 is there. And sulfonamides, they shows a different in their absorption of light. Why? In 251 nanometer in, in a pH of alkaline pH, they, alkaline means they show 251. In acidic means Slightly they are changed. In acidic medium, NH2 will become NH3 and less effective as an oxochrome. It becomes less effective. So, in acidic, it becomes less effective. So, you can see why it is less effective because it becomes yeah, the hydrogen atoms in acidic solution, they contribute and it becomes NH3. The lone pair of electron is getting satisfied, getting attached with the hydrogen. So, the energy needed may be, may be more needed for them to get excited. That is why you can see here the graph again for a graph for a solvent system. How a solvent system in the medium is getting affected was shown here. That is quaternary, quaternarium or qu quaternization, quaternary ammonium compound, it becomes quaternary ammonium, NH2 becomes NH3. So, what happens when it is an acid medium? In the graph, you see here graph, the sulfonamides in sodium hydroxide, sulfonamides in sodium hydroxide, you are getting a peak very sharp in 251 nanometer in sodium hydroxide, when it is an alkaline medium. So, you can, you have to take a solvent for sulfonamides, only sodium hydroxide, only alkaline, then only you will get the peak which is dotted line which is shown in the graph. But at the same time, you see sulfonamides when it is an acid medium, the peaks are not very sharp and lower absorption because the nitrogen getting attached with one hydrogen become cotonization takes place. And the oxochrome effect of the nitrogen or the sharing of the lone pair of electron has been hindered by this ionic con configuration or you can see the hydrogen substituent. So, that is why this is one example which you can mention very clearly by means of a graph of sulfonamides, how the solvent system, the pH will. And again another example also I have taken for you pH, phenobarbitone. When a compound exhibit a tautomeric, tautomeric, tautomeric form, ionic form, tautomeric form, because you know phenobarbitone has three double bonds, three double bond O, not double bond, three double bond O, specific character. And when it is in the pH change, what happens? You just pH of the solution plays a major role. Obtain selective absorption of UV light in the spectrum. Phenobarbitone shows strong absorption in alkaline. Why? Strong absorption under alkaline pH. When you take in sodium hydroxide solution, it gives very good absorption because you see here, it gives 255 nanometer. But in the same time, in an acidic pH or in a water, it does not give a peak at all. You can see the graph which I have expressed here. See this place, why I am showing this arrow to come very fast and go, you see this structure, you see this structure here and which is showing here about the sodium hydroxide peak when it is solubilized. At the same time, when you are 
coming to this place in this structure there is double bond o's two double bond o become the hydrogen have been removed of oh that is I, I, that is the bond is removed it is called resonance reson, resonance structure when it comes to an alkaline ph and that enhance lone pair of electron activity the n2 pi star of transition which helps to have an 255 nanometer due to c double bond n c double bond o chromophoric system the ph 10 maximum absorption is 240 to 245 but in a pH 13, you can get an absorption of 255. So that's why the solvent system plays a major role for any type of preparations. And also we have taken an example, even the phenol, when it is taken as a solvent in cyclohexane and phenol in water. What is in phenol in water, we know that it doesn't give a peak because the pH is low. But in you will see in a, um, cyclohexane, when you are preparing in low concentration of 0.002 percentage of solution of phenol in water and you have tried with cyclohexane recorded, the spectrum has been absorbed 230 to 300 nanometer using one cell. The cell thickness also very important when you are playing. So, in cyclohexane, little interaction between the solvent and the solute occurs, vibrational fine structure is absorbed. In water, However, the solvation of the solute and the hydrogen bonding are possible and the fine is almost eliminated, only the bond envelope being obtained. So, similarly, if the two solvents are aqueous and differs only in the ionic structure characters, example, different strength of same buffer solution it is possible for a salt effect. It causes slight difference in absorption band compound. So, you can see the picture also which I have shown here. That is clearly that is a peak in cyclohexane and phenol. So, today I am just stopping here and the next step that means next we will continue with how to utilize this knowledge in determining the Lambda max by theoretically using Fisher Woodward's rule. So, the definition which I have given, and I did not come, uh, come the complete explanation regarding the structure, how to calculate the base value, how to add, and which should be subtracted. Some examples I will give you in the next uh, lecture. So, that this knowledge is very important to know about what is the relationship with the nanometer. And how the shifting takes place, what do you mean by batochromic shift, what do you mean by hepsochromic shift, this is very, very important. Please try to, actually listening is very difficult. I know that students, when it is a lengthy lecture, no one is ready to listen, ready to listen. But we, we have to explain at least in some manner which will be feasible for the student. So, today's lecture, I think that students might have come to a conclusion that what is the relationship between various transitions in organic molecule when a light falls on them what is the energy what do you mean by the light energy and what is lamp that is what is the batochromic shift what is hepsochromic shift usually batochromic shift occur by means of presence of various substituent what is oxochrome what is chromophore these all are the some of the things very important aspects which we had a discussion today thank you thank you for being to be patience for listen my class thank you